Alright, looking at the thumbnail, that gives an idea of what I think about the movie. Before I start, let's preface this by saying this video won't have much visual flair, it's more focused on what I have to say, something to listen to in the background. I watched it yesterday, so these are my thoughts, somewhat fresh and according to memory and notes I took. Lastly, I must talk a little about my Marvel background, as it were. I've been with Marvel since childhood. I've been reading the comics, watching the animated series, the movies, and Spider-Man is my favorite Marvel superhero and one of my favorite characters in fiction as a whole. Why do I say that? To express that I'm not a professional Marvel hater, I'm actually a Marvel fan. So the criticism I have comes from a fan, not just an MCU moviegoer. What I can say I'm not is a fanboy. <laughs> What's the difference between fan and fanboy? According to the Merriam Cambridge Dictionary of American, the fanboy simply laps anything up as if it was a masterpiece without much critical thinking. Great, introduction done, now I'm gonna talk about the movie in general lines before going for the spoilers, you'll see a warning on screen. Your mileage may vary when it comes to the enjoyment of the film. Depends on how much you enjoy immersion, shattering, fourth wall shenanigans and multiverse plots. Me? Oh, those are two aspects of fiction that I'm not really fond of. It can be done right in small amounts, but we're talking about MCU Phase 5. Granted, Deadpool is all about it and it was fun in the first Deadpool movie, not a lot in the second, then came She-Hulk showing how much fourth wall breaking can be detrimental to a whole franchise, banking on connectivity in a shared universe. Additionally, I've enjoyed Marvel from phases 1 to 3, but many of us know there have been a decline since then and the multiverse plot device used as a crutch for cheap cameos has worn out its welcome. Oh, and the Marvel humor. Yes, the Marvel-style humor has gotten old because it isn't simply used in the MCU, but it spread like a virus through all of Hollywood. So, in simple terms, Deadpool 3 is a cameo fest filled with a tried-and-true Marvel humor but dialed up to 11 because Wade Wilson, with a little, tiny bit of moment you can take seriously enough. If that description alone is a deal-breaker or a deal-maker, again, depends on your taste or standards. Oh, seeing an actual costumed Wolverine is nice, and the action scenes are good. They got that covered. However, not enough for me to rewatch it. Thank goodness I paid half for my ticket. Alright, now I'll dive into the plot, characters, cameos, etc. Please skip to the conclusion if you don't want spoilers. Part of the main plot revolves around Wade Wilson trying to matter to be important and save his world, which will be annihilated due to Logan's death in Logan. Why? The TVA explains that when somebody so important in a timeline dies, that timeline is put in jeopardy and starts to vanish. If that sounds like bullshit, it's because it is. TVA is on Deadpool's ass because he's been hopping between dimensions using Cable's machine to try and become an Avenger, but failing. In one scene, Wade has a job interview with Happy, but he'd like to speak with the boss. The whole scene clearly insinuates Kevin Feige, but they actually mean Tony Stark. Here, Deadpool learns what it means to be a hero. You become a hero, not because you need to do it, but because people need it. At the TVA, the one who summons Deadpool is a guy named Paradox. Deadpool suits up and decides to enlist the help of Wolverine to save his timeline, which of course can't be the OG Wolvie who dies in Logan. Deadpool then goes to multiple realities trying to find a Wolverine to help, which is an excuse to show different versions and costumes of Wolverine until he finds one that can help him, the version we follow throughout the movie. This Wolverine let his world down and due to his inability to be there for his friends, all of the X-Men are dead. And that's an important part of his character in the movie. Deadpool and Wolverine will end up in the void. Notification, yeah, nice. Deadpool and Wolverine will end up in the void where the TVA sends everything they pruned. The place looks mad maxed and it's even one of the jokes. Here the true cameo fest begins. Ready? I'm about to spoil the whole thing. Okay? Proceed at your own peril. Chris Evans as the Human Torch, a bunch of Fox X-Men characters such as Pyro, Toad, and Sabretooth, then Elektra and her group comprised of Channing Tatum as Gambit, X-23 from Logan, and even Blade, yeah, Wesley Snipes. The movie is pretty much a Fox reject steam up. Aside from that, even that alley of Cloud Monster from Loki makes an appearance. Throughout the movie, there will be plenty of jokes that to me didn't land at all. Lots of references including the decline of the MCU and fourth wall breaking until the climax, when Cassandra Xavier, the main bad, invades the TVA to use a timeline shredder machine to destroy everything but the void. Then, either Deadpool or Wolverine must step up to save multiple realities at the cost of their lives. But then they both join hands, quite literally, destroying the machine. 
Deadpool reminds himself that he doesn't need to be a hero, but people need him to be one, and Wolverine redeems himself by doing something right, saving Deadpool's world, even if he couldn't save his. Here's what I like about the movie, still in the spoiler category. Jennifer Garner looks beautiful no matter her age. Lady Deadpool in a super tight costume looks... Nice. The action is enjoyable to watch. And the fact that Deadpool's world doesn't mean the whole ass world, but just his friends is a nice touch. Okay, spoiler section done. Conclusion In my theater, which was packed on the premiere, two-thirds of the people attending, me included, watched in deep silence. And only one-third was laughing at the lame jokes, clapping like seals, and gasping at every cheap cameo. Funny how I giggled like three times and one joke that I thought was smart went over the head of this one third gobbling up everything. I guess I would laugh at more of those lame jokes if I'd intentionally lower my standards. Or IQ. But I couldn't do it. To me, the best moments in the film are the serious ones, of which there aren't many. Such as the deeper motivations for Wolverine and Deadpool. The action scenes are a joy to watch and the costumes of the main characters are on point. But the worn out cringe Marvel humor Cheap cameos, member berries, and the Ryan Reynolds Deadpool over the topness just made this movie far from great to me. Like I added to the thumbnail, this ain't gonna save the MCU. Out of Phase 5, my favorite is still Guardians of the Galaxy Vol. 3. So, these are my thoughts on Deadpool 3, or Deadpool and Wolverine, if you will. I remember many other little details, but that's enough for this video, and that's it. See ya.